One of the biggest pitfalls um, in, in our business of being an owner operator is the operating expenses. The price of trucks has gone up. The price of repairs has gone up. Everything that we do has gone up. The money we make has not gone up as fast to, to, to keep up with that, but it, it is slowly. Um, the biggest, I think the biggest pitfalls is our repairs. The biggest problems we have is our repairs. If you don't know when you're coming into this business what potential repairs could possibly cost you, you're in deep trouble the first time that you, you know, you, you break down in the side of the road and you call a tow truck and that guy wants 500 bucks on your credit card before he even turns a wheel just to show up. And then he gets you hooked up and then he takes you to wherever you want to go to get repaired and you get a bill for $1,200 just for a tow. Like that's, that's heart stopping the first time something like that happens. And then you get somewhere to get your truck repaired and you know, if you're lucky, you're getting presented with a bill for three, four thousand dollars, five thousand dollars. That's a good. We, I, I got a friend of mine. We joke around that if you can go into a Volvo dealer and come out with a bill with under under a thousand dollars, that's a great day. That is an awesome day. You, you do a happy dance off to the side. Um, my biggest pitfall was replacing a motor. That was forty grand, forty thousand bucks. I blew the motor out of my truck, and. It was because I was, I was pushing my equipment beyond its limits. It wasn't even the truck's fault. I have a truck that's built to do this, this, and this, and I added this, this, and this to it. And I pushed the truck beyond what it was designed to do, and I blew the motor clean right out of her. And it was just pure luck for me that I broke down on the QEW exactly two miles from the Volvo dealership that I bought the truck from. I mean, you couldn't get any luckier. And I was able to limp the truck to the dealership and I, I was lucky as well because they, they cut me a break. I'd bought some trucks from them and, and done other things. But the fact of the matter is, I was not prepared when they said, okay, Bri, yeah, we can fix your truck. Here's the estimate and this is what it's gonna cost. And I'm looking at you know a, a number that to re just replace a motor that I bought was equal to what I bought my first truck for. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my God. Um, so that is a huge, huge pitfall. If you're gonna be an owner operator, investigate. Talk to other guys. Like, how much does this cost? You know, how much does it cost to replace a transmission? How much does it cost to replace differentials? You know, all of the things that are regular wear and tear on your truck that are, are eventually gonna wear out and break down, know up front that when it goes, this is how much it's gonna cost you. You're gonna need to have, you know, eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars to replace, you know, a transmission and, and a differential. You know, the motor blows, depending on what kind of motor you have, you're anywhere from twenty-five to forty thousand um, bucks. And you better have it because the, the dealership doesn't care. Whoever's got it, they don't care. If you can't pay, the truck sits right there, you know, or until you can tow it and take it somewhere else and, and they can sit in your driveway. But until that motor's fixed or until the repairs are done, you're not going anywhere. In this business, you know, if you're a new owner operator, if you make it from the time you buy your truck, when you make the decision and you get everything lined up and you buy the truck, you turn the key, if you make it from there to the three year mark, Okay, and 60% and, and of owner operators, I'm not sure if that's exactly right, 60%. I think it's it maybe a little bit higher, 60 to 65% of owner operators fail within the first three years. So if you can make it from the first to the third year, you're doing well. And then from year three to year five, the, the percentage drops significantly. So the fact that I've made it past the five year mark and I'm still going, um, that is my success and the fact that I'm still able to do it today at my age and, and run, I guess, successfully. And I've got a good company behind me that I'm willing to work for. They take care of me, they treat me well. I'm willing to work and go the extra mile to make sure that they make their money. They get their value out of me and 
I guess it's sort of like a marriage like that, and that would be success. One of the biggest failure stories I've ever, uh, not a big failure story, but one of the, 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 the stories that, that I, I laugh at um, is I got this friend of mine, and he, he's, he's about a six or, he's only been driving six or seven years, maybe eight, and he was a company driver, and he kind of did it right. He was a company driver, he paid attention, he, he, learned his, he paid his dues, he learned the ropes, and then he decided he wanted to be an owner-operator. Um, he didn't do a couple of things that I would have suggested that he do. He didn't spec out his truck properly. He didn't, you know, he, he didn't do those things. But he finally got his truck, and the guy went nuts with chrome, lights, all the interior. He spent thousands and thousands of dollars making this truck absolutely beautiful. And it is. To look at the truck, it's gorgeous to look at. It's a really good looking truck. And then he starts having breakdowns and he can't afford the breakdowns. But he would have had about $7,000 in the bank if he hadn't slapped all this chrome and all these lights and all the, all the interior stuff. If he hadn't done all that, he'd have had seven grand sitting there. And it takes me back to when I had one of my Kenworths, I had it all chromed out. I had all the lights. I had a hardwood floor. It was absolutely beautiful. And I was showing it off. I was being cocky and I was showing it off to a guy one day. And this old man comes walking through the yard. This guy had been driving since I think Jesus was around. And he says, he sticks his head in my door of the truck. I was, you know, hey, what do you think of that? Look at that. It's beautiful and everything. He takes one look and he's, he's looking, he's looking, he sticks his head in. He's, he, sticks, he pulls his head out and he looks right at me. And he goes, yeah, that's nice. He goes, but let me tell you something, son. He said, Chrome don't make you any more money and it don't make you go any faster. And you know what? <laughs> he's right. I have not chromed out another truck. Any, any chrome that's on my truck came with the truck. I've not done anything to the interiors of my truck except to add a little couple of creature comforts, but I don't need fancy. I need a, a reliable truck that's gonna get me where I wanna go. It's gonna do what I require it to do and it's gonna satisfy the needs of the company being ET.